folks. Let's talk about what I liked about this movie. First of all, the action sequences are great. We've seen that J.J. Abrams can do great action sequences. He just has great cinematography. The sound editing is fantastic because it's also familiar. Not only is it an exciting action sequence happening, but you're like, those sound effects, I grew up on them. Oh my God, it's all new. It's blowing my mind. You can't help but have the nostalgia bomb hit you over the head, hit you in the face, but like the force just let it in. And the characters were great too. All right, John Boyega and Daisy Ridley have great, bright careers ahead of them. If there were new characters that were gonna introduce to the Star Wars saga as the main characters of a movie, I'm glad it's them. They're fantastic actors. They bring the strength where they need it, the heart where they need it, the vulnerability when they need to. And they're just great performers. I mean, some of the actors you heard were in this movie, they're in it briefly. And you get the feeling it's like, because they wanted to be in the Star Wars movie. Max von Sydow's a cameo. Don't let anyone tell you different. And Kylo Ren surprised me in this movie. I thought Kylo Ren was just gonna be kind of like Vader 2.0. He's just a little more human. When you start hearing him talk you just notice it's not a big brooding voice for the sake of a big brooding menacing voice i mean it does have a voice box that makes it sound well it sounds just like it sounds in the trailer but you can tell that the tone of it is to, he's still a human being no the big baddie with the mask in a movie is actually he's a character I'm not saying darth vader wasn't a character i was just surprised that in this day and age they had a masked villain for the sake of big and scary that was and a big shout out is happening because this big shout out is happening harrison ford is han solo was great. I thought Han Solo was gonna be in this movie, kind of shoehorned into it, to kind of take these other younger, newer cast members under his wing, kind of be like, hey, audience, here, they're the new ones now, we're handing the torch over, you can trust them. And because one of the best and most beloved characters in the previous Star Wars trilogy did that, then we trust him, and like, all right, Han Solo, if you say so. And while that is kind of his function in this movie, he is still a character. He's out there on the adventures with them. He is doing stuff. They didn't have to do that, and they totally did, and that was great. I saw that scene where Han and Leia are hugging in the trailers, like one blip, and I was like, all right, they're just gonna do that, and you're gonna see Han and Leia on scene, and it's gonna be Han and Leia for the sake of Han and Leia, and he's just gonna be a cheap way to be like, ooh, nostalgia. And while there are some easy nostalgia moments in this movie, that's just not one of them. There are some great moments with Han and Leia where you're like, oh, you're characters and you have history. Again, with Han Solo, I love the fact that he played old Han Solo. And when I say that, it's not that he played Han Solo 30 years ago, again, just as an older guy. He played Han Solo, who has lived 30 years of a life since the last time we saw him. He's a little older, he's a little wiser, but he does have that Han Solo edge. That's character evolution. I love that. If he was just the same guy he was 30 years ago, I'd be disappointed. I'd be like, why hasn't he grown at all? Is he just a big man-child? Leave that to the YouTubers. We're supposed to be the immature ones. Smugglers are supposed to be responsible. There are some characters people are like, that's gonna be such a badass character. They're barely in it. Like I already said, Max von Sydow was kind of a cameo in this movie, but I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, Captain Phasma did exactly jack shit. Captain Phasma didn't do much at all, and I was kind of disappointed about that. Donald Gleason was great, but he was exactly what I wanted him to be, so it was just kind of easy to say he was great. He was, I just wanted this young Imperial officer dick. And guess what he was? He was a young officer dick for the First Order. Bravo, you've pleased me. And Poe, Poe was one of my favorite characters in the movie, I didn't see him enough. I loved when I saw him and I want to see him more. I just didn't see him enough. Immediately you gravitate to this dude and you're like, I'd hang out with you, man. I just would. I cannot believe you're gonna be Apocalypse because in a galaxy far, far away, if they do have a dictionary, the picture next to the word likable is that guy. And one of the best things in this movie for me is something I think some people are going to have a big problem with. And that is you do not have all of your questions answered by the end of this movie. Some of your questions are answered, but you end this movie with 10 more questions. However, there's going to be more. It's part one of a trilogy. And I love that. I love the intrigue. I love the fact that when the next trailer comes out, I can be like, oh my gosh, it left off here. So I think it's gonna go there. And oh, what are they doing? If you couldn't tell by now, I love me speculating. And I just like doing it. And this movie had some great humor too. You know, with JJ Abrams, you knew it was going to have humor and I've never seen humor like this work in a Star Wars movie. The prequels tried to be funnier but it just came across as awkward. Nothing really landed. And the original trilogy doesn't have as much humor although it does have humor not as much as The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens has more humor but more humor that landed and it made the movie as a whole feel a bit more relatable and a bit more human. Never seen that much of that side of Star Wars before and I was glad I saw it. Now one of the things that helps bring the OG original trilogy Star Wars fans into this movie is one of the things that needs to be touched on is all the nostalgia in this movie. And that's the familiar plot points from the other Star Wars movies in this movie. A few times in this movie you're like, I recognize that. Oh, I've seen that before. I have seen that before. And while there's a part of me that does understand that they did that for the introduction for Star Wars Episode 7, it's like, all right, it's been 30 years. Like a lot of fans kind of had a rough patch with those prequels. All right, we'll let them know that we're going back to the old ways. I feel like in the sequel, we'll get more new things, but it does have to be addressed that on more than a few occasions, you're like, 
I've seen that. I kind of equate it like this. It's like every side-scroller Castlevania game after Symphony of the Night was pretty much Symphony of the Night with a new skin on it. Doesn't change the fact that they're all just fun to play and they're all great. It's just they're still the same game. I mean, I can make excuses all day long as to how I can deal with it and how I see it and how I think it's okay. That's just for me. The point is I need to inform you that it's in here. And if those familiar as plot devices from other Star Wars movies being in this movie is too much for you, well, you just need to know that. My job here is to inform you, not think like you. The end of this movie, the last act, the thing that the good guys have to do is really familiar. You're going to be like, I've seen exactly this. But it's not really the point for the end of the movie. I mean, it gives everyone something to do to get to the point. The point being Kylo Ren and the confrontation with him. That's the point. And it was great. Because this lightsaber fight, man, I feel like that's not a spoiler. You knew there was going to be a lightsaber fight in this movie. It's great. It's great because it's not super choreographed. It's not flashy. It's really dirty. It's really gritty. It's just really real. It feels like a couple of people just hacking at each other to try to kill and survive. The most important thing I can tell you is manage your expectations for this movie. If you deify The Force Awakens already, you're going to walk out of this movie disappointed because it is a great movie with flaws that are noticeable. And it's probably that because it's springboarding off of the original trilogy, which are great movies with flaws that are noticeable. Nostalgia aside, admit it, they're there. But a movie can still be a flawed movie and still be great. Most movies I consider great definitely have flaws. Guys, in the end, The Force Awakens had great characters, great exciting action. It's a wonderful reintroduction to the Star Wars universe and it gives it revitalizing energy by hearkening back to the old and giving us some of the new. There's a lot in here that I loved. I had a fun time, but I also had a surprisingly emotional time. You walk out of this movie, you're like, that movie hit a lot of emotions for me. I've heard some people say it's a turn your brain off fun movie. I can't say a movie hit so many emotions for me and I actually started welling up in a few scenes and they'll be like, yeah, it was total turn your brain out. No, those are two different movies I'm talking about if I do that. There is a scene in this movie where my eyes just welled up and got hot and I just grinned and I was like, that is amazing. I don't know if I was like welling up I was just getting emotional. And it's not, I wasn't sad or anything. It was just a powerful scene that I really, really liked. And I'm glad it was in this movie. The Force Awakens was personally what I wanted it to be. And if you keep your expectations in check and know that it is a movie, you can walk out of The Force Awakens having one of the most enjoyable theatrical experiences you have had in 2015. And I'll say without batting an eyelash, Star Wars The Force Awakens is awesome-tacular. <laughs> <laughs>